Okay, grade 11, we're going to continue with trig functions now in part 3. And this is the horizontal shifts. This is going to be the shift to the right and to the left. And in terms of our standard equation, we're going to pick it up from this plus P here. So if we have A times sine of X plus P all plus Q, the horizontal shift is indicated by that plus P there. We can compare it to our hyperbola on the right here. Remember when we had that x at the bottom, and if it was x minus 1, it was a shift of 1 unit to the right. So similarly over here, with our trig functions, if p is greater than 0, in other words, it's positive, then it's a shift to the left. And if p is smaller than 0, in other words, it's negative, then it's a shift to the right. Now let's have a practice here. We are going to sketch number 1, y equals sine of x plus 30. Now that would indicate a shift because it's a plus 30. It's going to be a shift to the left of 30 degrees for the domain 0 to 360 degrees. So let's see what that's going to look like. Okay, so we're going to have our usual standard sine curve. I've drawn that in just so that we once again... Remind ourselves, cuts at 180, goes down to minus 1, and then up to 360. So that's our standard sine curve. Now, if there's a shift to the left, it literally means that where it cuts at 180, it's now going to shift 30 to the cut at 150. Where it cut at 360, it's now going to cut at 330. Where it reached its minimum at 270, it's now going to reach its minim minimum at 30 degrees less, which is 240. Here it reached its maximum at 90. It's now going to reach its maximum at 60, which is 30 degrees less. The other important points that we need to show, okay, so the new max is going to be 60 degrees 1. There it is. Let's just actually do this in pink here. There we go. So my pink graph is the new graph, the shifted one. And remember, once again, it's important to show the turning point there, the turning point there, and this value here of a half. Now, how do we get that value of a half over there? Because the graph is sine of x plus 30, at 0, you would just put sine of 0 plus 30. And you would get the sine of 30, which is a half. And then the other important point is at 360, right at the end here, what is the value there? So you would put 360 in place of x, so you'd go sine of 360 degrees plus 30, and you get basically the sine of 390 degrees, which would be a half, and that would indicate how you get that coordinate pair over there. Let's just remind ourselves the amplitude here is still going to be 1, period is 360, and we've added our labels. Okay, let's have a look at number 2. Here we've got y equals cos of x minus 60. Now if it's minus 60, it's going to be a shift to the right of 60 degrees. And this time we've changed the domain to be minus 180 to 360. So let's have a look what this likes, looks like. The first thing I just want to indicate is that I've drawn our standard cos curve. And this time I've taken it from minus 180 all the way through to 360. So you recognize the standard cos curve. No changes there. But then we need to now go and look at the, the shifted one. It shifted 60 degrees to the right. So once again, instead of 90, we shifted 6 to the right. Instead of 270, we shifted to the right. And we get a graph that looks like this. Okay, but we're not finished it yet because we need to fill in some crucial labels. Now, let's think about this, okay? So we just said it was 60 degrees. So if we move 60 degrees here, what's that? 330 degrees. So it's going to cut at 330. Here, 60 to the right is going to cut at 150. Here, 60 to the right is going to cut at minus 30. It's going to reach its max, sorry, its minimum, not at minus 180, but minus 180. Oopsie. 60 degrees, what's that going to be? 
oh, minus 120, hey? So it's going to be minus 120, minus 1. This one here doesn't reach at 180. It's 180 to the right 60, so that's going to be 240. We need to fill in all these values. And over here, if I want to find this n value, it's going to be 360 degrees, and I need to go and find out what that value is. So I'm going to plug it in over here. So it'll be cos of 360 minus 60, so the cos of 300. And we quickly go and use our Casio cos of 300, and we get a half. So that's going to be a half. So we've done that. We've done that. We need this little endpoint right in the negative end here. It's going to be minus 180 minus a half. Okay, I think we've done everything there. Oh, we haven't done this little point here. There's this little point here. Let's see, it normally would be at zero, but now it's 60 to the right, so that'll be 60 degrees, one. Okay, so our amplitude is going to be still one. It's deviation off the baseline is one up, one down. Period is 360, and I've gone and filled in all my important labels, basically the minimum, the maximum and the endpoints. And there you have it. Let's do one more together. Okay, the tan one. Now shift minus is going to be a shift to the right of 15 degrees. Once again, this domain is minus 75 to 195. Quite a strange domain, but we can work with it. So once again, let's make it smaller. We've worked here with our basic tan curve. Remember our asymptotes? Are going to be at minus 90, 90, 270. Then we've got two full curves running along here, cutting at 180, cutting at zero. Now, let's use a different color other than pink. Let's use orange for a change. So now if this moves 15 degrees to the right, that means my asymptotes are going to move 15 degrees. It's going to be there. there there so now my asymptotes are no longer going to be at minus 90 minus 90 let's work this out mm, now 90 plus 15 this is going to be at 105 degrees this is beyond that's too far so we don't need that one 180 it's now going to cut at 195 and thankfully, that ties up with my domain there. Not at zero, but it's going to cut at 15. And what else do we need to work out here? I need to work out what this is here. So it's going to be minus 90 plus 15. Minus 90 plus 15. We get minus 45. No, that's wrong. Minus 90 plus 15 is going to be minus 75. This is minus 75 here. So now what I want to do is I want to redraw this because this is a bit messy at the moment. So let's see if I can redraw it over here. Okay, so let's remind myself, asymptotes at minus 75. Minus 75. Again at 105. And... Let's see, then it's going to cut at 15. And now we can draw our graph. The important thing as well is to know now where it cuts the y-axis. That's when x is 0. So we're going to plug 0 into our tan. So it's going to be tan of x minus 15. At zero, it'll just be the tan of minus 15 degrees. So on the Cassia, we go tan of negative 15. And we get minus 2.6. Okay, so that's a very strange number, and that's totally fine. <coughs> Excuse me. And then we decided that it was going to cut here at 195. going to go down like that um what's another key value we want to know what its value is at one so that's basically going to be
halfway between 105 and 15. And I think that is going to be, actually, let's do that again. So it's going to be 15 plus 105, which is 120, divided by 2, which gives me 60. So it's 60 degrees. It's going to be 1. Let's just test that. So if I put 60 into here, 10 of 60 minus 15 is going to be the tan of 45, which is 1. So that's quite right. So let's just see that I've done everything correctly. My amplitude doesn't exist. My period is still 180 degrees. And let's give it some highlight here with an orange. So let's see. I've got one full curve happening here. And I've just got this bottom curve. And the domain was from minus 75 to 195. Yes, I've done it. I've labeled my points. I've labeled the asymptotes. Perfect. Now, I've got two examples I'd like you to go and practice. Number one, number two with different domains. Remember with the shifts, what it's going to look like. And then directly below that, I've got the memo on the notes as well, which you can pick up on the notes on iTunes. You. Okay, grade 11s, there you have it. That's the horizontal shift. Now on to part four.